In today's episode, the guide has got jokes. So to get across the bridge here really quick, we should be okay at this thing. We put some duct tape on it earlier today, so we'll give it a go. Let's see how it's doing. We learn it sucks to be a baby giraffe. First thing they do experience though is a six foot drop down to the ground. Mom does give birth standing up. I'm just gonna go a little bit quicker. It's not exactly the nicest walk in the world. And is that hippo okay? In your left, they're hanging out in the water right back behind. Do the you. vultures think he's not sleeping? Now when they are in the water, they can hold their breath for about eight minutes. Who got this? Dad got this. We are getting ready to get on the Kilimanjaro safaris here. It is about a 110 minute wait, but we got a fast pass and we are a few minutes from our fast pass. So we're going to head in. Very good out of your left. All right, we'll go over here on your right hand side first. We'll start with that off copy in that back left hand corner. They do have a black and white stripe pattern on their legs and back hand side. So a lot of people believe they're related to the zebra. However, they're actually the only known living relative to the giraffe. Very shy and timid creature, though. So shy, in fact, they were not discovered by the Western world until 1901. Over on your left hand side, I'll go with these taller teen antelope lying down. These are greater kudu. They are the second tallest antelope species in the world, standing just under six feet tall. These ones are definitely female. We can tell that by the simple fact they don't have any horns on their head. Only males have those horns. So I have a few of these reddish orange antelope lying around. These are some bongos, nicknamed the ghosts of the forest. Their horns will go on a backward slant. That's just going to help them to run through these bushes super quick and disappear within seconds, which is why they were given that nickname of the ghost. So we're going to be going over here on our left hand side. And right up on top of the ledge, Ooh. there's a black rhino that's standing up top over here. Now, unfortunately, there are fewer than 5,000 black rhinos left in the entire world, and they need a poaching for those horns. They all thought to have a medicinal value, but we have found out they're just made out of the same thing that you can find in your fingernails and your hair. Unfortunately, though, that message has not made its way all the way across the globe yet, so they are still heavily poached. We keep over here on your left hand side to go in that back right hand corner and go through some of the thicker grasses. There's a bigger black and white bird back in there. It's a saddle stork. Here's the saddle shape that they have on their face. They seem about five feet tall, and they have a wingspan about nine feet across. They're definitely not one of the smaller birds around the world. Oh, look, it's Kevin! That's a couple different animals in one area. We're gonna head on out of the forest, though, start to make our way on over towards the Safi River, so you can find that direction. They don't have as many trees to hide behind, so sometimes it's a little bit easier to find something over there. That wasn't too bad. We can qualify it as a success. We're just gonna have to see what the river has in store for us right now. Interesting. Don't really get to see this all too often, but I guess it's not super hot out here right now, so we have no problem doing things a little bit differently. So we're not even gonna look in the water. We'll look right up on top oh, wow. of the over here on your right hand side. You have a hippo taking a little bit of a power nap over there. You see how large they really are? They're about 5,500 pounds. So they're definitely not tiny. What we normally find for hippos during the day, it looks like this here on your left, they're hanging out in the water right back behind. Do the them. vultures think he's not sleeping? Now when they are in the water, they can hold their breath about eight minutes at a time, so you don't always see them if they are around. It's actually quite a few of them The vultures are like, are you nice sleeping? Like, or? They don't really swim. What they'll mainly do is sink down to the bottom, and they will walk crawl on the bottom of the riverbank. Some of those larger gray swipers out there on that island right now. Those are some pink backed pelicans. They do get their name from the pink coloration. It's going to appear on their backhand side during the mating season. They're more of a colonial bird. They've been found in groups of 20 to 500 individuals. It's not small amounts by any means, that is for sure. They're another large wing species of the bird. Their wingspan's about 7 feet across. That's going to be the width of the canopy that's up above your heads right now. There's still one more hippo moving around here in the bank yet on your left hand side. I can also see some really large now crocodiles out here on your left. Ooh. These guys are about 18 to 20 feet oh, look at those. the same length as they drop this tall. If they stay completely still in the water, they can hold their breath about two hours at a time. And they do have a jaw pressure of about 2,000 pounds per square inch. Now, shockingly enough, the now crocodile is not the most dangerous animal in all of Africa. That title has been given to the hippo. They're a very territorial animal. They really don't like anyone invading their space. But we're going to go check out the savannah next, and that is normally where we can find some of those more popular animals. Well, they're pretty active right now, making the way through the area. I guess some great views while we're down there. We're just going to make a quick little stop by a very large tree coming up over here on your right hand side. That was a baobab tree. Its nickname, however, is the upside down tree. It kind of just looks like it has the troops on up in the air. Now they go leafless for about nine months out of the year. They'll hold all the water that they need in those trunks of theirs, which can easily be about 10,000 gallons. Some of the animals do know that. Might find some puncture marks in that tree's trunk. 
me from elephants from going up to them when it's super hot out. And that way they can get some much needed water. This spot right here though, this is my favorite spot in the entire reserve. It's an absolutely beautiful view of how the savannah can just go on for miles on end. Savannah is molded by the animals that live here. The elephants will come on through. They're gonna knock down all of the dead trees and the bulldozers. The giraffes will go underneath the living trees and make them all the exact same level. They are the pruners. As the antelope come on by, they mow the grass. Everything's pretty much taken care of by the animals for the animals. We're just really here to observe them. We do a pretty good job of it. I see a couple different species out there in that higher field. Looks like there's maybe one or two down here in the lower field. So we're pretty well spread out. It's exactly how you want it to be. Everybody's too close together. It's a little bit overwhelming at times. Don't always know where to look. I think it's safe to say we need to get some more antelope migrant through down here in the bottom corner though. Wow, these fish are getting really tall. I got some work to do for sure, but we'll see what we can find. Alright, we're over here on your left hand side. If you guys look right up on top of the cave, you can look on the slope of the cave that's going down. There's some tan, black, and white animals kind of hanging around. The ones on the cave are kind of cuddled up there together. Make a nice little doggy pile. We're going to find some African wild dogs hanging around. It's oh. known as the painted dog. Now these guys are going to be the most successful hunters in all of Africa. They are typically led by the alpha male and the alpha female. Some are in the cave too. See them laying on the top there? I know two dogs have the same coat pattern. They're all unique and different in their own way. It's kind of like their own individual fingerprint. But fewer than 5,000 of them are left in the world. These guys are sadly the most endangered predator in all of Africa. But they do love to be coupled up close to each other. That's how they keep their close social bond that they have. There's some sable antelope over here in the corner on your left hand side. This guy's going to be the official emblem out here in the Harambe Wildlife Reserve. They're really special to all of us that reside here. As they grow in age, those horns start to curve back over their shoulders. I just keep predators from jumping on their back when they're not looking. One's always a little bit darker than the others. They'll be the more dominant one of the group. Darker with age and as they grow more mature over the rest of the individuals that are currently residing with them. We pass by a lot of these really tall red mounds that are on either side of the truck. These are some termite mounds. They're as hard as concrete. So animals like giraffes and elephants do like to use them as a scratching post. They eventually will get worn down, like that smaller one over there on your right. Little antelope are going to use them as a lookout post. Only made out of three materials though. Mud, spit, and animal dung. It's not the best three things out here. <laughs> I admit, you can only work with so much when you're the size of a termite. And as you guys can see, not too much around here for them. So you did have to get a little creative. Actually a little too creative for my liking. Yeah. I'm not termite. Tell me how it's way too much for that. Maasai giraffe galore over here. You can normally tell these guys are going to be Maasai. Just by looking at the ear like the pattern that is on their bodies. I currently count four babies hanging around. So you have two of them that are lying down together in the taller grasses. One standing up behind them and then there's one a little bit farther back there yet as well. They're about six feet tall when they're first born. They can stand up on all fours in the first hour of their life. First thing they do experience though is a six foot drop down to the ground. Mom does give birth standing up. I'm just going to go a little bit quicker. It's not exactly the nicest walk in the world. But it is what's going to happen if you are a member of the giraffe family. This is a very large group. There's going to be some here on your left hand side in just a moment as well. So that's a tower. So as they make their way through the area, they look at the nickname the Journey. So sometimes you can hear either word being used. They do only have seven vertebrae in their neck, which is the same word we have in ours. They're just larger. They also have this 18 inch long tongue. That just helps them to reach the leaves and branches that are just out of reach. It is a dark purple in color. The mouth quite often would be rather painful. That already is sunburned. There's a big male here on the left hand side. He's the one in the middle. And then you get the four babies hanging out here on your right hand side. So there's a two standing up. And then once we move up a little bit more, the two lying down are going to be just on the edge of the road over here on your right hand side. Traps don't really sit down like that all too often. It's only about 30 minutes a day. So a little time. A few minutes here, a few minutes there. It's where they are the most vulnerable. I mean, that position for too long. Just in case one of those predators comes around. But other than that, I'm not seeing too much else around here. Which is perfectly fine. This is only one small section of the savannah. We still have a lot more ground to cover. A lot more time to do it. And I still oh, want to try to find you guys something a little bit larger while we're out here today. Hi. we have found over here in the corner. Right? Beautiful elephant over there. That's definitely a male, just by judging by the size and the fact that we are only seeing one. Males are more solitary. Only females are young. Typically, I mean the ones that have been hanging out in herds. 
And if we go carefully over here on your left hand side, so along this flat part of the rock, see those bushes that are in the back? About the back right hand corner, right behind the palm trees, there's a mandrel sitting there in the lookout bushes. He's a little bit tricky. There's some monkeys found in a group known as a troop. That one actually kind of small, so it's probably a female to be completely honest. Males are quite a bit bigger. They have brighter coloration on the face and back hand side. Kind of make them look like our good friend Rafiki. And there's two on the termite mound over there as well. But we're going to go see if maybe we can find a few more elephants hanging around. They're never too far apart from each other, so we should be able to find some more. Get those really large ears on their head. Tons of hearing about a mile away. So they always know that we're coming before we ever have a chance to see them. That's what's going to Sometimes if an elephant does not like what it is hearing, it's just going to move right out of an area. It's happened on more than one occasion. Probably not the case today, though. Still want to find some more for you guys. Just have to get across the bridge here really quick. We should be okay with this thing. We put some duct tape on it earlier today, so we'll give it a go. Let's see how it's doing. work with, but uh, I guess it's doing okay for right now. <laughs> Let's see, we'll make our way around, get a couple different angles. Uh, that baby that's back there, I'm not sure if we're going to get another look at it, but elephants do have a gestation period about 22 months, and babies are first born. They're about 300 pounds. Oh, that big male that we found, he's about 15,000. So there's plenty of room to get all nice and big. This one is an adult female, got larger tusks on her. Every now and then you might find the elephants flopping their ears around quite a bit. It's a cooling technique that they use. It's just like their own personal air conditioning unit. You can drop that temperature by about 15 degrees. Pretty useful tool. Also have that amazing trunk. There's about 40,000 different muscles in that thing. Some really great things for these guys. From perspective, we have less than a thousand in our entire body. So it's a great tool to have. There's a little spring box here on your right. These guys can jump six feet up in the air and 13 feet across. They're only three feet tall though. As tall as they're ever to get. What they will do with those pronking. Their speed is about 60 miles an hour. At six feet in the air. As they jump, they hunch their backs into an arc. I'm really excited. Once one starts, show me all start going. It can happen all too often. So it's actually really amazing to experience it. There's a little flamboyance around the corner over here. But in this case, a flamboyance would be a group of flamingos. These are the greater flamingo. They are the tallest, standing just under five feet tall. Also, I should have been. But they're completely gray when they're first born. Don't get that pink coloration until much later in life. A strict diet of beta shrimp, which is full of carotene. Here's a better look at the Ancoli on your right hand side as well. He's right up on top of the hill. He's that really solid one over there. Really impressive. Stop some poachers that made their way onto the reserve last night. I'm trying to get some of those elephant tusks and rhino horns back. Unfortunately, poaching is still the number one leading cause of population decline for both of those species. Yeah. We're really trying to stop that yes. if we can. It's not an easy battle to win though. It does seem like it's absolutely never ending. There's an ostrich down the road there on your hand side. A couple of birds. Oh, yeah. oh, they can't fly. That's make up for the species about 40 miles an hour. They love to play games. They're very good at it. Now, larger animals, if you like to hear on this mud wallow here on your left, does help to cool them down. It also works as a sunscreen and a bug repellent. Which anything you're going to do, it will do the trick. So keep our eye out for something a little bit larger. Also be muddy while we're finishing up through here. Ostrich won't really use them. The mud's a little bit too thick for their feathers, so they'll actually lay down here in the dirt. Spread out those wings and bring that neck up to get some dirt up underneath. Take a nice little dust bath. Works out really well for them. We're starting to come through some areas where some of the animals like to hang out a little bit more of a spot. Quite a few of us on this truck though. It's a lot of extra eyes. If there's anybody Stanley roaming around over here, we should be able to find Stanley them if they'd like to be found. That's key after all. Some animals like to play hide and seek. Sometimes they win. Sometimes we win. Just depends on who is better at playing the game that day. It looks like it is gonna be us. Right over here on your left, we're going about the back right hand corner. There's a little hay pile right above where the hedges are gonna be. There's at least one cheetah lying down in here. Right above trees right here. Like two of them. On either side there. And those are the fastest animals in the world. Like about 65 to 70 miles an hour if they really push themselves. They are more of a daytime predator though. They only weigh about 100 pounds. They stay with larger cousins that are more active during the evening hours. One of the very few big cats do not roar. They purr, make a chirping noise. God makes it sound like a bird. It is rare to find a group like that. But when you do, it's a coalition. 
and a good majority of the time they are related to each other one way or another. <coughs> this big rock formation up here, so it's a copy. Sometimes you can find some very large predators up on top of here, using them as a lookout post. Or the rock, the more heat they do absorb, so on a warmer day, you really don't find a whole bunch up top there. I don't think warmth is going to really be a problem today, though. <laughs> Make our way around, see if we have any luck. See our buddy friends up ahead of us here yet. Those ostrich are still a little bit farther back. Ooh, you awake now. She just went jumping up. No, that's a sheep. We'll give Chris in a second here. Make her way around. So she's still awake. She's just a little bit higher than we might expect. Can you see her baby or not? Some of you guys caught her. Watch the very top at the at the rock baby. The highest rock. Lion at sea. All the way up top of the rock. See her? Right there. A male's wow. down here. He's asleep her? with another female. And Lions uh, do sleep on average 18 to 20 hours a day, so lower two are pretty normal. Much more active when the sun goes down. When well, they are like that one girl, though, see exactly like we do during the day. Once the sun has set, they do have that nighttime vision six times during their own. So special padding on the bottom of their paws. Nice, close to prey. That female no. top there, she's got a great she's vantage point. She can see everything around her for any prey item. Well, I would be able to find her. So lazy men. See some warthogs over here on your left hand side. They're hanging out in this back right hand corner about 10, 11 o'clock. Lying down back there. There's some burrowing animals out in a group known as a sounder. When they sleep in their burrows, though, they do sleep with their tusks pointed outward. Those are it's a pumba. While they're sleeping. They don't always use their own burrows in order to take one from something like an aardvark. We're going to get a great look at this one right here. I know here on your right. So there's actually quite a few. See the two that you can see, and then there's a couple about 12 o'clock here right up here in a little bit clearing it. Oh, they're pretty big, about 5,000 pounds. Those on the black grain that we saw earlier, it's really only about 3,000. They all have horrible vision though. They only see about 3 to 4 feet in front of them. They definitely rely on a sense of hearing and smell to make up for it. So those are our eggs over there in the right. that mossy tree. Those are some ostrich eggs, about 3 pounds piece. Very, very sturdy. Anything weighing about 300 pounds, instead of one of those eggs will not break. Maybe get a scratch on it. But one ostrich egg is the equivalent of about two dozen chicken eggs. They do form a communal nest. We have a whole bunch of adult females laying those eggs together. I'll take turns watching over them. They have absolutely no problem leaving those eggs for extended periods at a time. Yeah, nothing will happen. They're really safe and sound. <laughs> Last year, here at the Smigani Glen, which is the shyer animals you like to come to hang around. A whole bunch of different hiding places through here, so you don't always see somebody while you're driving through. It looks like somebody is in the very last corner of the reserve over here on your left hand side. Yeah. A scimitar horned oryx. This is a desert oryx. antelope species oh. that can go nine months without a single drop of water. You'll see it. All the water they need to eat. Won't even start sweating. It's going to reach an internal body temperature of about 115 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're, oh, we're going to start to make our way back towards the village. You can the Harambe Wildlife Preserve. We do take great pride in being part of the Disney Conservation Fund. The fund has helped out so many animals like you guys were able to see today. One of their biggest projects helped out elephants. Researchers have accidentally discovered that elephants are afraid of bees, so they put beeline fences around the farms of Africa to keep the animals out. That way, hopefully, they will not trap the crops. It is a win win situation. Unfortunately, if those animals were to get too close to villagers, they would end up poaching them. Hopefully, this can stop that. Sadly, there's still about 96 elephants that are poached every single day. So That was probably the best safari that we have ever been on. I think because it was cool out, the animals yeah, were all there out. Flamingos, my there was lots of flamingos. We saw the lioness way on the top of the rock. We saw elephants and giraffes. We saw everybody. Even got to see one of the cheetahs, which is rare. That was awesome. So if you get a chance to come in the cooler weather, I recommend you do because you get a real, actually it was two cheetahs. I'm being corrected. You get to see a lot of animals that way, it seems. Dad got this. Come on in, y'all. Welcome. Go ahead and come on across. We're going to the other side of the house. To make sure you don't miss any more of Dad's crazy adventures, go to youtube.com slash dadgotthis. Be sure to like.
subscribe, and hit the damn bell. I double dog dare you. Come on, you have to do it. It was a double dog dare. I mean, those are the rules.